screen will be here. Howdy, howdy, welcome. Uh, link to join live stream is in the chat there. I'm Eco Builder. What's up, Orlando? How are you? Hello, hello. I've got my uh, Finnish buddy in the chat as well. We're both a part of the Hex community, hex.com. Uh, this is a project uh, product created by Richard Hart, richardhart.com. That's a really good one. Richard Hart. Awesome. Hey, Orlando, uh, did you feel all the heat today? It was 109, what somebody told me at the supermarket. All right, Orlando. Um, I am in the Hex community. Um, I am a part of a group of people who recognized um, that there was this guy who was an early Bitcoiner uh, who is cleaning up crypto now. His name's Richard Hart. I put a um, URL there, richardhart.com. Do you want to join me? Hey, hey, your audio. Only. Okay. Hey, how's how's it going? Yeah, I, I just Good. didn't have the video because I'm I'm here with my daughter. I was just that's cool. And seeing how uh, I I didn't know I thought more people would be on here. So, um, so I have had people join me before, but um, it's it's pretty sparse typically. Um, so I, market, I get a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, I, I got you. When the market is down, like any of these. Not 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 like just guru, but just any educational content. It seems like people are not really searching for it. And I think a lot of people believe there's still another leg down in crypto and traditional stock market. So I can see why there's a lot of like lack of interest still. But I have faith that it's going to build up again. So. Hey, but also um, crypto is kind of a wild west. And so a lot of people just kind of dream that like oh well if this person did it that i know then i can do it too and so they're yes. like oh just any old project might pop off so why don't i just put twenty dollars here twenty dollars there and you know a, a huge roulette table right yeah well you know during a bull market like when like at the beginning of a bull market like when once you have traction and momentum that's actually not a bad idea like well, I'm, I'm just saying like it's kind of like throwing darts at the balloons at a carnival you know game you're yeah. probably going to profit off them. But at the end of the day, in a bear market like this, you're going to get a lot of the fat cut, you know, and, and a lot of people are learning that the hard way because you're not only getting the fat cut from the top projects that we know, maybe the top, you know, 20 market cap type names that we know. But, yeah, you're seeing a bunch of these small things go down to nearly zero. Yeah, um, I've seen 90 percent dips, 95 percent dips on a lot of things. Yeah, including Hex including ever, what I'm into. Yeah. Do you invest in the traditional stock market or I no, a I lot of people go ahead. quit doing that. And I went into gold and silver and then I, um, I pulled all my silver and put it into, um, crypto, uh, five years ago or something. And mm -hmm. then I've been playing around with that. And then about that time I found Richard Hart, um, and Richard Hart then created a product within two years and I invested in that. And that's uh, this this hex token that I want to tell you about. And um, I've been with that since like early adoption. Um, it allows you to earn a yield on top of uh, your existing crypto. So like interest, right? Um, so the interest rate is like really high because of the way that it's set up, you only earn interest if you um, if you stake your tokens. So mm -hmm. you like you lock them up, right? But uh, what makes this unique compared to other uh, crypto locking up is that you can cancel anytime you want. You just face the penalties. Um, yeah. The whole go ahead. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was, I was gonna say, as you already know, like a lot of people have an ugly taste in their mouth after what happened with Luna and, and Voyager and a bunch of these other programs, uh, Celsius that had, you know, they were essentially kind of, like you said, the wild west when, when it came to uh, risk management. And so people see it as a, 
pyramid scheme or, you know, they're going to try to stay away from things like that at the moment. It's probably going to be a tough business to be in temporarily. Um, I, I have faith that there is some type of, you know, when you don't have overhead and no third, no trusted third party to, to worry about, like that you have a banks that, you know, uh, that kind of cuts into the amount of interest they could offer you. I could see how they could offer more than some banks. But at the end of the day, like when you're getting things that are, you know, too good to be true, it's going to be tough for anybody to trust at the moment. So I, I mean, I'm sure you, 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 you understand that too from your end. Yeah, but there's a philosophy of like what is crypto and what is not, and those projects that you just labeled had real world assets backing their crypto assets, and that's the reason why they failed because one or the other side got shaky, and then it caused the other one to go off balance, and so in hex. Um, it's like we're creating a new uh, national currency and we have decided that this is our system of truth. And um, there's it's just the mathematical workings of the system um, that is very complex, yet simple to operate or to interact with. Um, and it doesn't have any real world assets um, tied to it instead um do, 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 do. instead whenever you lock up your tokens and earn the interest you're earning more tokens so it's whenever you return back to uh wanting to get rid of those tokens uh, returning back to a market to trade it out for us dollars that you find uh what the actual price is so like like say you put in 20 dollars and then uh, you gain a lot of tokens after staking, uh, and then now you still have twenty dollars worth of tokens. Well, it's a bad time to sell. Okay, that's so, that's how this system works. So and so, a lot of people they point to it and they say, "Oh, that's a scam," because there's nothing backing it. But this is a cryptocurrency. We've we've um, we've detached from the rest of the world. Okay, so it, it does gain value when people put money into it. But what happens when? you get into a bear market where no one's putting more money into it. Does that affect your returns? I mean, that's basically, it's all your money in there. So it never affects the returns of the hex tokens. It's, it's the, the game theory that keeps the hex tokens either coming or going. Um, and then it's like, if, if a lot of people decided to sell right before the, the bear market or during the bear market, then yeah, the, the price is going to go down. But these these are you know fluctuations um, that are that are just a natural occurrence of um, of what we're dealing with. First of all, a financial tool, but also um, over time the adoption of cryptocurrencies like it's it's really volatile, right, up and down. But um, uh, I we've this certain cryptocurrency has only been out for two and a half years. It's mm -hmm. gone down 85%, like three times before. It, this is just what happens with adoption of cryptocurrencies. Um, the reason why Hex token is so special is because a uh, Bitcoin maximalist has evaluated. He used to mine Bitcoin um, back in the day. And so he's well, he's wealthy on Bitcoin. He's, he's wealthy on other entrepreneurial um, ventures. Uh, but he finally decided to make a coin. It was time for him to make a coin. And he he made it um, on top of the Ethereum uh, blockchain because Ethereum uh, was the best place to build something and run something. And so it's had 100% uptime uh, and, and absolutely flawless. And everything's, of course, transparent, oh, yeah. as you would expect with a cryptocurrency. So I have my daughter here to, oh, it's yeah. all good um yeah. so what i like to tell people is like we're erasing the middleman the banker and the the person who issues your currency and instead we're deciding to we're socially deciding to go with this system instead yeah it it sounds like it's it's something that's very possible because i mean i'm bullish long term on crypto so as long as crypto does well that environment it sounds like that these type of like you know where you're not really backed by real road assets like whether it's gold usd whatever they're backing it with i mean personally i, I kind of like that collateral 
I mean, I know some people do, but uh, as we saw when the deep pegging goes wrong, I don't know if some big uh, uh, hedge fund was behind it or what. Uh, I think it was BlackRock they were accusing or something for Celsius or somebody. I forgot who it was, but they could they basically destabilized it. Um, you know, you get bad actors in situations like that. You get bad actors in regular crypto, but I'm not. I'm not. I guess I have to do more research. I, I would have to review your white paper. Uh, I'm more in the medical field, but I kind of, like I said, I dabble. I'm, also, I'm, also, I'm actually working with a crypto project. I'm an advisor for this one crypto project and um, out of Austin too. So okay. uh, we, could just, we could, I'll probably shoot you a message maybe after this uh, to discuss that uh, um, on the side. But yeah, it's, I, 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 I'm bullish on the future, so I could see how something like this could work. But I would, I personally would just want, I before I would invest something like this, I would want to look at the white paper, um, and then also just see the tokenomics of it to see, you know, if it makes sense in a not just a bull or bear market, but just like if crypto was to be successful for the next decade, two decades, or if it's the future, you know, um, like where if, if this could have a, a niche or if you know if it has. Uh, it could, you know, it could be an environment that's conducive to growth. If, if, if it's all, I guess, the tokenomics and and the business plan of it makes sense. Yeah. Um, so let me uh, explain the hex token. Um, so it's a a contract sewn into the Ethereum blockchain. So you know that. Um, it was two and a half years old. So it was December second of two thousand nineteen. Um, there was an entire first year of adoption um, allowed. So it was this event called the adoption amplifier to where you could turn your ETH into your Ethereum into uh, hex tokens. Uh, every day it was based on a ratio of like how many of, of the Ethereum tokens did you put into the pool today? And then they split it up. Every day was different. The day tick over for uh, the contract, the, the day takeover is like either six or seven, I think it's 7 PM right now. And then of course, time change. Um, it's always staying the same. Um, and what happens is, um, oh, and then Bitcoiners were able to free claim back then during that first year time period. So the, the original name of this project product was called uh, Bitcoin Hex because it was meant to be a hex on Bitcoin. It was meant to replace Bitcoin. Um, the founder, richardhart.com, he believes that um, Bitcoin lacked uh, a few things. And one of those things was um, a inflation rate. He thought that uh, it should have a set inflation rate for healthy growth. So hex tokens inflation rate is 3.69%. Um, and is this what the, you do burning of the tokens or? There, there is never a burning of tokens. Okay. Um, well, I, I say that, but technically there is when you stake it, you burn it and the contract recognizes your wallet as saying that you're gonna, that you just burnt it and that you, said that you would wait a certain amount of time and then you can return to the contract and say hey um i messed up i need to accept the penalty and get what back of the principal i can uh, if you serve over 50 percent of your stake then your principal is secured but then um it starts to eat away at your interest you know um the furthest you can stake out for is 5,555 days. So it's all in amount of days that we're talking. Uh, the, the smallest amount you can stay for is just one day. Um, your day doesn't start until the day ticks over, you know, start and stop. Uh, you have a two week grace period at the end of your stake in order to do the deed, uh, to mint your tokens back into existence, back into your wallet. So it's a, um, if if the government starts looking further into this, then that's that's when it comes back into your wallet. Um, uh, besides that, your wallet would just be recognized as uh, having an interest rate that we call shares. Um, so 
the something that that people don't like is the staking. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Something that people attack about the product because it is a product. It's already done. Uh, it's not being edited anymore. Uh, it never was edited. It was just placed there, and it's been working ever since. Um, and of course, like you're paying the Ethereum fees in order to interact with the thing. Um, something that that people want to poo poo it about would be locking it up. But I always tell them like you can you can cancel any time. Um, whenever it is that people experience a penalty, then those penalties are then given to the people who are responsible who stay staked uh, for their time period. So you could actually earn more than what's expected because of other people's penalties. Uh, and then maybe like larger whales in the system uh, would want to like game the system in a certain way. So they'd be fine taking penalties here and there in order to to get their coins out um, and and stake it again for a certain time period or something. Um, but something else that people point at and and try to poo poo the project about or product is that there is 10% um, of the coins are owned by people like me, players in the game that are trying to get more tokens. Um, and 5% of the tokens are out on exchanges being the liquidity and everything uh, to lubricate the systems of ins and outs. And then about 85% are uh, held within a wallet or a system of wallets that uh, protect the project from being front run. So a lot of people want to point to that and say, oh, your founder, richardhart.com, has all of those tokens. And actually, uh, for, the, for the systems of laws and stuff, we, we just say no one, no one owns those. No one has control of those. Those have never sold coins. Uh, they've always sat in those wallets. And so it's, it's, our, it's our off balance uh, asymmetrical system that allows our system to work as opposed to, um, you know, having those real world assets mm -hmm. out, out, you know, backing yeah, so. our situation one to one, you know, like the first time I ever saw tether, I was just like, I wish this thing didn't exist tether one to one with the US dollar, because people could easily just get in and out of Bitcoin, there is no loyalty to Bitcoin. Um, if people can continue to get out of it easily um, whenever they start to fear the market. And so that's why I really love Hex Token because it, it gets people uh, to hold, to is buy, a, hold, and stay. Yeah. Is it a proof of stake? Yes. Okay. And is a DAO? Uh, uh... It's not a DAO. A DAO, yes. No. You know, I go a few. I you know I went a few weeks getting uh, doing deep dives into traditional stock market. I'm over here stumbling over the <laughs> the crypto terminology now. Uh, so you you it's not a DAO. You said correct. Correct. So there's no governance tokens or anything. So nobody could truly, uh, you know, because you know with the governance tokens, like they could always have a vote, like what to do with the other 85. percent So this is all built, uh, I guess, black and white into the blockchain uh, into. Uh, uh, on Ethereum, you said, right? Yeah, it's a contract it's on contract Ethereum. Thing. Okay. Yeah, and um, so these uh, we call it the the OA, the origin address, holds um, that eighty five percent of the coins. Okay. And and no one has access to that. Like you, or, I mean, what what happens to that eighty five percent eventually? Does it ever get tapped into anyway? Actually, um, as the penalties accrue, it gets a portion of those penalties to continue to make sure that that stays a large glob uh, that cannot be attacked. Okay, so so is it dependent on the penalties? So I'm saying uh, if nobody, let's say in a perfect world, no one had any penalties, it would actually decrease from 85%? Uh, no, it would, well... Um, I think it also gets a copy of the bonuses. I think it, I think it grows as the, um, uh, as, as the holders grow, then it grows too. 
Okay, in so order maybe to there's even it out. I'm pretty sure it gets a... relationships or direct relationships that y'all have set up. I, I would have to read the white paper maybe to see how that Hex... remains balanced or so. Hex.com. Hex.com. Okay. Yeah. I do. I do need to head out shortly here. I I, okay. I, I was I was thinking more people would be on here just to, uh, so I could be a spectator, but I didn't expect you know to have a conversation. But hey, it was a it was a pleasure. Okay, cool, man. Um, uh, thanks so much for uh, giving it your eyes. Um, and I've I've got business cards if I ever see you. Um, I mean business yeah. cards for the the hex stuff. We've we've got about a hundred thousand stakes right now, not stakers behind you know people behind the wallets, but um, the amount of stakes put out there. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, and just I'm sorry that I was late today. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I, I do attend some of the Texas Blockchain Council meetings. Uh, I try to, you know, whenever I can go to those. I, I went to one in Austin before, too. I've actually, that's where I met the person that I'm kind of uh, working on that crypto project with. But I'll shoot you a message and we'll, we'll, cool. we'll touch base there, too. All right, man. Okay. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks. Take, Take care. care. All right. Sweet. All right. So I'm going to go get tacos now.